hello uh, let's start analyzing this in this particular session what does a program manager do in a service-based company and what are the roles and responsibilities and where does exactly does uh, the role of a program manager come into picture in uh, end to end program execution so this this particular video is mainly about uh, highlighting some of the aspects in a service-based company so what does it what does a program manager typically do what is the role of a program manager and when does a program manager get involved so let's take take a look at uh, this particular aspect uh, in in context of how is a project life cycle in, in any, any typical service based company uh, there are customers who are interacting uh, uh, to whom sales representatives from the rep from the respective companies would be get reaching out to now the sales representatives primarily put forward a sales pitch to customers offering hey this is company x and we are offering uh, these services now typically these services could be we can help uh, uh, service your network we can monitor your network we can get uh, uh, IT infrastructure installed we can track your ongoing operations uh, if you're expanding uh, we can offer you uh, services uh, so that you focus on your executing your business and we can help setting up your IT infrastructure your email infrastructure your support system your tech support system any of these kind of multiple uh, uh, projects that, that that sales team can pitch saying that they have the capability of executing some of these projects so uh, now usually sales team go and pitch to a customer that hey we have an expertise in, in these aspects and typically customers would have their own customized set of requirements now in in this part usually sales people are trained only to go and uh, they are trained in negotiations and art of communication and putting up pricing and all these aspects but they they may not be technically expert in what they are selling they would have some high level idea so usually while drafting proposals for customer the sales team typically sometimes take help of pre-sales team and usually the composition in a, in a pre-sales team would be sales representatives program managers uh, a technical team uh, who have who are like su subject matter expert and then architects so these are the set of people who uh, uh, who would technically augment the capabilities of a sales team and these people would form a core team uh, while drafting a proposal for the customers when in the initial negotiation all the things go good uh, usually at this point in time uh, uh, a deal deal is closed and after that it is moved on to delivery stage this is this is a brief overview of a project life cycle let's look at it in a more structured way which this powerpoint slide captures and I'll make it full screen so that you get a fair amount of idea how does the order pipeline looks like. Here is a customer. After the sales team have properly given a couple of round of meetings, uh, presentations and explained what, what are the uh, services are up for offer, customer goes and, and uh, puts up a uh, order. Customer part, part and places order in an ordering tool different companies would have different set of uh, customer relationship management tools in, in, in their portfolio uh, which which they will highlight uh, some some may have online automated systems some may have customer relationship management tools crm tools that's uh, that that comes into play and typically what what these tools track is uh, they they're like uh, helpful in tracking potential leads potential clients which sales team can go after uh, you know the leads could be captured by if, if there are certain marketing events conducted and people may have dropped down their contact details to reach out to them later or sales team may have proactively uh, got it using certain 
uh, links, references, various different mechanisms. <coughs> so, once the customer places that order based on the service negotiation deal, within the IT systems, there would be an order created. So, this, these are there would be some typical system automated framework in place wherein that order gets highlighted. Hey, somebody has placed an order. Now, it's like customer going and saying, hey, I need this. And, and typically in big service-based companies, there are typically some level of checks which are required, whether customer is going forward and placing an order, has he got the right amount of discount? Or is it like some sales guy has just to meet his numbers, may have gone overboard and promised a lot of heavy discount and all. So some sort of sanity checks would be required uh, by by a, a team in place usually you know different companies have a different way so typically it, it would be in one form or the other wherein some validation checks would be done by a third team which is different from the uh, uh, sales team they would look at the, all the essential parameters whether the order has the right uh, processes in place whether the discount is proper whether the price offered is correct whether such a service is uh, actually offered by the company or not or things like that <coughs> once this is checked that it is it is all good the order moves from my order created stage to order booked stage that hey now the order is in uh, book, booked booked state there there in no no restrictions on that order it is now booked now now take a look at this when an order is booked there is no payment made yet customer has just asked hey I need this and the company has acknowledged yes we'll, we'll, we'll execute this that's when a project setup is initiated typically before this all before this pipeline order step number five you would say it would be in uh, order creation or project creation phase it's like still uh, with, with the sales department once that project is set up there's a new PID that that's get created now this PID project ID different companies would have different mechanisms of highlighting hey this is uh, the project uh, that that got created you may have uh, oracle projects that maybe you you may be tracking for projects uh, execution you may have uh, uh, ms projects multiple project tracking tools could be used out here to set up a project ID now what this project ID uh, sh ideally should have all the information what the previous deal team has done you should have order references there you should have uh, prices information there so that any program manager who is to execute this will get to know what was the uh, commitments done in, with respect to pricing what were the timelines proposed how much resources would have been committed to this project typically when when these orders were placed and created the sales team may have presented certain facts they may have pre-prepared pre a scratch uh, sheet wherein they would have computed we are going to offer this service this one would be our typical margins like if if there is a product or cost to company is say X sales team may want to get 20 to 30 percent or higher percentage of margins and then sell it X plus 20 percent at the selling price so all those uh, rough calculation sheets or the which uh, sales team may have used should be captured in some form or in some reference when this project setup is done so you should have margins uh, pricing timelines, expected delivery times, uh, on-site, off-site, any travel and, uh, travel uh, uh, expenditures uh, proposed, maybe the client, you, you need to execute the project on the client side or on the uh, on, on off-site, contact uh, uh, numbers of the uh, customer side, all this information should be captured in this setup out here. That gets activated once this order is booked and all and once that gets activated, it is after this point number six that the delivery team, which is called out here, that the delivery team should gets into action. The, typically, the delivery team you can think of composed of 
two different aspects. One is a program manager and rest of the people are there's a work manager, there would be technical people associated with, with that um, skills and expertise of executing that service. Let's say if you have asked to set up a network infrastructure, you would need some network administrators, configuration, uh, database server, uh, maintenance people, installations, people with that kind of a skills and expertise you would need. So it's the very first person that gets assigned to a project is a project manager. He goes through the statement of work, SOW. In, in another video, we'll go through what does an SOW contain, but a high level, it is the statement of work that has been agreed on. These are the tasks to be completed. And, and th in, in, in this time uh, frame, these will be executed. So the program manager goes through SOW, identifies what level of skill sets uh, are required for executing this project. He creates a request for onboarding such skill set based resources onto this project. So typically each of the project management tools allows to have, uh, allows to create uh, resourcing requests. Uh, and and that, that those resourcing requests would be uh, automatically triggered within work managers, basically the delivery managers who have resources directly reporting to them, people with that technical skill sets. So program managers picks up those resources from work managers in their after the discussions and composes a team. So program manager is now got uh, technical resources to execute that particular project. He has got customer information. He has got sales uh, per representatives information. All this is set up now. This this is like the engagement time when he should engage with the customer communication. The very first step a project manager does is to call out all the stakeholders meeting, get them uh, onto a common agreement so that there is no misunderstanding from an execution perspective when a program manager starts executing the project. Uh, customer is on the same page, sales representative on the same page and the program management and the delivery teams are on the same page. That level of agreement is the first point of engagement when the customer, uh, when, when the program manager engages in the project, and subsequently it's all about executing that project as per the agreement and ex as per the proposed timelines. During the course of this delivery phase, he tracks completion, marks, checks whether the project is right on track with respect to cost, with respect to quality, with respect to expectations of the customer side. Once it is complete. He goes through and, and complete, uh, set, uh, marks the project as 100% complete, goes through a set of uh, processes to uh, mark it. Different companies may have different procedures to mark a project complete. And this project completion then triggers a process wherein delivery team may think it is complete, but let's get an acceptance from customer also because he's the one for whom we have placed this order. Customer signs and agrees that okay the project has been delivered it's complete that's when it goes to delivery close. Now another point to note out here is there may be certain projects which would need uh, uh, which would which would not complete immediately to hundred percent. There may be milestones like milestone one. If milestone one gets completed, release twenty five percent of the payment. Milestone two release sixty percent of the payment. Some of these uh, may be staggered in, in, in different uh, payment uh, milestones. That's when you, uh, the, so step 8, 9, 10 would, in, a, in accordance, would repeat uh, till the time the project 100% gets complete. Once these agreements are done, the delivery is closed and it is triggered to revenue recognition team. So basically, uh, yeah, instead of 8, 9, 10, it's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That, that gets repeated for each milestone uh, for payment recognition. You get customer agreement, hand it over to finance operations team, and finance operations team issues receipts. Hey, we are due with these this much amount owing to services delivered to you. Typically, there are uh, terms in, in, in your project execution which says T plus 30 are the payment terms. T plus 60 are the payment terms or net 30 or net 60 are the payment terms. What does this mean is on the day when you issue a 
uh, that re receivables account receivables uh, from finance side the customer will pay within if it is t plus 30 within 30 days they'll pay back if it is t plus 60 within 16 day, 60 days they'll pay back so that that kind of uh, uh, payment schedule is agreed on and uh, finance teams they are on tracks the completion on recognition of the project so the project managers task is usually in this 7 to 8 but this 7 to 8 at times while executing 7th you need to go through what were the previous uh, uh, understanding of the project go with the sound clarity and ensure that till 10 you stay engaged with the customer so that you get an excellent feedback on your project execution. So I hope this uh, has helped you understand some good understanding on project management out here.